Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror mystery film, Siam Square. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with Jublik, a high school student waiting anxiously for a girl in a room with her friend named Turk. Jublik's getting impatient as they have been waiting for a while, but Turk assures her that she will come. Someone enters the room, but they're not who she's expecting. They accuse Jublik of harming another student named May, and then ask Jublik if she had the same dream as they did, as if their lives depended on it, but Jublik denies it. The students mention a student named Bertie, who died because of a girl. Jublik responds that it's all May's fault, because she refused to listen to her warnings. A flashback reveals her and May in that same room alone. A girl then enters and takes a seat at the front, and the girl suddenly speaks up, asking if they heard the story about a girl who kept wandering around Siam Square for a long time, until she finally found her way home. The girl stops telling the story, but curiosity gets the best of May, so she sits beside the girl despite Jublik's warnings. The girl hands a red book to May, who packs up her things and leaves without a word after receiving it, confusing Jublik. When she turns around, the girl has gone. Jublik points at the corner where the girl has vanished and tells everyone that she needs to return the book May took. Suddenly, all the televisions turn on static and flash it goes before the lights go out. Jubla crawls on the floor in the darkness and speaks into the wind to let her go as she has returned the book. Jublik then notices someone standing before her, and when Jublik flashes her flashlight on that person, her voice quivers as she recognizes May. The scene then returns to Siam Square, surrounded by malls and buildings. There are also tuition and review schools for students, preparing for university entrance examinations. One of the rooms in Key Building Tuition School has some strange and creepy superstition. It's believed that if a student wants to pass the examination, they must go to that room alone at 11 p.m. They have to tie red threads on the second chair of the first row. The blindfold is a must, because if students look straight into the red thread ghost's eyes, she'll enter their dreams. They'll have red strings around their wrist when they wake up, meaning their days are numbered. This horror story started 30 years ago at Siam Square, where a girl went missing after a blackout and was never found. Rumors say she reappears to look for someone to join her. One week earlier, Jublik leaves May after seeing she's staring at Pon, one of the many high school students for the review schools. May has secret feelings for Pon, but he doesn't see her that way. However, she's been having casual talks through text with a man who won't be named yet. Turk's friends, Mon and Newton, want to take a video clip in that room to gather millions of views and earn money. On the other hand, a short-haired student named Nid meets up with her friend, Dao, who gives her a book before departing, as their review days are over. As she leaves, Nid goes straight to the bathroom. Later that night, May and Jublik enter the room. Jublik wants to help May rewrite her biology paper. Before they start, Jublik rants about a student she considers a competition. But then she notices May texting instead of listening. Fed up, Jublik snatches her phone and lectures her about the dangers of talking to a stranger. May ignores that, so Jublik returns her phone. May returns to texting while dismissing Jublik's problems. An angry Jublik snaps and tells May how fed up she's about cleaning up her mess. Deeply offended, May storms out. Turk spots her crying in the hallway. Turk asks if she's okay. Suddenly, a city blackout happens before she can answer. Electricity returns shortly after, and May removes Turk's hand on her arm and opens the bathroom, where they find an unconscious Nid. May wakes her up, and when they see how confused and weak she is, the two drop her off at her house. Turk drives away to drop off May at her home, but May firmly refuses and tells him they're not friends as she hates him. Turk pulls over after May kicks his seat, and she immediately rants about it to the man she's been talking to as she walks home. Turk drives straight to the key building, where he runs into Muwin and the two girls. Turk informs them that he's there to check on his friends, who are trying to catch a ghost in that room. At that same time, Mon introduces the tutoring school rumor to be haunted by the Red Fred ghost to the camera, filmed by Newton and Pond. He starts messing around, disrespecting the rumor and the believers, as he tries to prove that the ghost isn't real. He uses an app on his phone to detect if there's a ghost in that room. The smile on his face vanishes as the phone rings when he places his phone near the legendary chair. He stops filming, but the phone is still ringing. Suddenly, a ghost's face flashes on his screen, so Mon tosses it out of surprise. The others don't see it, but the trio starts hearing something, so Newton and Pond take out their phones to film. They shiver in fear as they capture the chair with red threads and begin to move. They capture the rumored red thread ghost, grabbing red threads from the corner. Mon, Newton, and Pond immediately storm out. Newton looks around and notices the clock on the wall malfunctioning. Mon and Pond grab him to run, but then they run into Birdie. Mon warns Birdie not to enter the room, and then runs away with his friend, leaving her confused. Despite the warning, Birdie still goes in, and takes her wallet that she left on the floor. She turns around to leave when she hears a woman's voice, telling the story of the girl who went missing in Siam Square. She looks around to look for the voice, when the red thread ghost grabs onto her shoulder, revealing her terrifying face. 
As Mon, Newton, and Pond get out, they hear Birdie's scream of horror, and not long after, she exits the building, looking disoriented. The following day, Amy repeatedly attempts to get a hold of Jublik, but fails to contact her. So she checks Jublik's social media accounts, only to discover that Jublik has made a new account not to be associated with her anymore. Jublik posts photos of her enjoying her time with her mom, Dao. Mon, Newton, and Pond try to contact their friends that night, as only a few students attend the class. Mon grabs Newton's phone to stop them from contacting their friends. Mon screams at Pond that they're not going to that school anymore. That rainy night, May goes to Nid's house to check in on her. Nid invites her into her room to catch up. May immediately notices the friendship book on Nid's bookshelf. As May goes through it, she finds a page with words written backward. Nid explains that she needs to read the message through a mirror. May holds the book up to a mirror and reads a song. But when she turns around, she finds an emotional Nid. She stops herself from bursting into tears and asks May if she saw another friendship book the day they found her in the bathroom. This confuses May as Nid already has six friendship books and still missing another one. Nid explains that the books on the shelf are records of how she sees herself, but the one she lost contains how her friends see her, which truly matters to her. Meanwhile, Mon, Turk, and Newton are in Muwin's room. They're reviewing the video they took last night that captured the red thread ghost. They transfer the file into Muwin's computer to slow down the footage, but the red thread ghost's face is distorted. Mon raises his concern about whether it's possible to move the ghost's presence into multiple devices as they capture her on a digital file. Muwin leaves the room to attend to the visitor that rang his doorbell. Muwin's sister informs him that a friend is waiting for him, but suddenly she is nowhere to be seen. Muwin returns to the room, looking pale and not so himself. Muwin zooms into the ghost's face for a reason. So Mon, Newton, and Pawn ask him why he's doing it. Muwin remains silent. Suddenly, Newton's phone rings with Muwin's face as the caller. Although confused, Newton answers it. Newton calls Turk and Mon to the side to tell them it's not Muwin sitting at the computer. The real Muwin barges into the room. They slowly move backward to Muwin's side, as they are freaked out when the door suddenly slams shut and the lights start flickering. The imposter Muwin sitting by the computer slowly turns his head at them, revealing that it's the red thread ghost. The guys scream in horror until someone starts banging on the door. Muwin's sister opens it, calming them down for a bit. But as they turn around, the ghost is gone, and so is the footage of her on the computer. The following day, May finds herself in an establishment with closed stores where she sees Jublik across from her. May begins walking to follow Jublik when familiar faces start showing up, even Nid, who warns her not to go. However, May ignores them, as she wants to rekindle her friendship with Jublik. But then the red thread ghost suddenly shows herself and screams at her. As the sun rises, and Turk and the three wake up, finding red strings around their wrists. They meet up with the rest later that day. It turns out, all of them dreamt of the same thing. They are in an establishment with closed stores, trying to stop May. The girls are scared for their lives, as they realize the rumors are true. On the other hand, the guys decide to go into the cursed room to put an end to their misery. May stalks Jublik to the mall with Nid, who suddenly becomes sad after seeing a picture of Jublik with her mother. She excuses herself to the bathroom, leaving May alone. At that same time, Turk goes to his father, who informs him that he will be attending a funeral of a student whose parents he knows. That student's name is Bertie. Turk cannot hide his shock after hearing this, so he asks his father if the school is haunted. Turk's father once rented the building and thought that the girl who went missing 30 years ago was not dead, but instead ran away to escape her miserable life. Around that same time, Mon and Newton enter the haunted room to contact the red thread ghost. The door behind them suddenly slams shut. Mon looks through the glass in the door, checking for something. When he turns around, he finds himself alone in the room. On the other hand, Newton experiences the same thing, but with him, it's nighttime. Newton notices the wall clock malfunctioning, and the lights flicker, before he sees a girl sitting on the chair with red threads. Newton slowly approaches her when she suddenly stands up, faces him with her head down, and asks if he wants to know how it all started. Newton backs away in fear, as she slowly walks toward him. The ghost reveals her terrifying face, causing him to stumble and lose his glasses. Newton continues to back away, and fortunately quickly gets and wears his glasses just in time as she vanishes. Newton looks around, trying to find the ghost. A chair suddenly comes from his hide, almost hitting him. When he turns to the side to look who threw it, he faces the ghost up close. Newton screams in terror, backs away to the wall, and hides his face in his palms. He then peeks through his fingers and sees the ghost staring at him. He gets thrown out to the corner, where he reunites with Mon in the daylight. Newton's voice quivers as he tells Mon that he saw the girl. Turk enters the room. He informs them that the red thread ghost's name is Jong Maniret, which rings a bell to Turk. Meanwhile, May sees Jublet pull out Nid's lost friendship book from her bag and a red thread around her wrists, just like her. Around that time, Turk takes his friends to the mall parking lot, where he informs them of Bertie's death. Mon, Newton, and Pon see May with Nid stalking Jublik, who is with her mother at the mall's parking lot. 
Suddenly, Nid calls Dao, Jublik's mother, and introduces herself as Zhang Manira, her nickname. Dao gets speechless upon hearing the name, recognizing it. Jublik calls her mother's attention, and the two enter the car and drive away. Mei confusingly approaches Nid, but the three of them stop her. They inform her that Nid is dead. Nid doesn't understand what they're talking about, so Newton explains that she's already dead, but her spirit still haunts Siam Square. Nid refuses to believe it at first, but everything flashes back. It turns out Nid went to the bathroom to read the letters and sign the friendship book Dao gave her. Nid couldn't help but smile as she saw the messages, but it vanishes as she reads what Dao and her friends think of her. They hate her guts, they think of her as fake, pretentious, and an attention seeker, who always thinks of herself as the prettiest. Nid dropped the book and cried in silence as she felt the pain in her chest. She looked at the red thread around her wrist. She thought it symbolized their friendship and love, but for Dao, it meant hatred. She's about to leave the bathroom when the lights suddenly go off. As the lights returned, Mei and Turk stood before her. When they dropped her off at her house, her younger sister was astounded after seeing her in the flesh. Just then, Nid realizes something. It's then revealed that Nid has been missing for 30 years. Nid's parents died months after her disappearance. She has no idea how she could travel for 30 years, but the pain in her chest after reading Dao's message in the friendship book still haunts her. Newton informs Nid that after she went missing, her chair became a mysterious relic, and rumors started to spread. The more people repeatedly talked about the ghost story, the more real it became, as they believed it was real, until it created the spitting and terrifying image of Nid as the red thread ghost. Newton claims they need to hear from Jublik about what happened at night, so they can send Nid back home, as her being there can lead to their death. The following day, Mei meets with Turk, who informs her that he met the girl who wants her friendship book back. Later that day, Mei waits for Nid to come and take her friendship book, but their friends come instead of her. They pressure her to confess what happened that night. The flashback scene shows her alone in that room, where she sits beside the girl, who repeatedly whispers into her ears, instructing her to give the friendship book that Dao keeps, and in exchange, she will never have to see Mei again. Jublik obeys as she hates Mei. The scene returns to the present, where the television suddenly turns on static, before flashing the girl's terrifying face. Everyone in that room screams in horror as the lights go off, while the others are standing outside attempting to come in, but the door is tightly shut. Jublik's voice quivers as she sees Mei standing before her. Jublik backs away, until the red thread ghost appears behind her. As promised, Jublik will never have to see Mei again. The red thread ghost throws Mei onto the wall, and does the same to Jublik before lifting Mei by choking her. Turk tries to help Mei, but with the ghost's scream, he gets thrown to the corner, hitting his head. Suddenly, the ghost lets go of Mei. Newton from outside screams at everyone to close their eyes. They close their eyes, but a phone rings, angering the ghost. The ghost lets out a terrifying scream as the wind howls in the room. As soon as Newton sees that the wall clock has stopped, he instructs Nid to go to the bathroom, so the red thread ghost will disappear. Nid does as told, but her ghost stops her. Suddenly, silence fills the room, until Pawn suddenly attacks Muin. Turk immediately tries to stop him. Pon backs away, causing him to fall out the window. The celebration for Nib returning home turns into cries as they see Turk's body outside. Five months later, Jublet moves on with her life with new friends, while Mei loses her friends one by one. They visit Turk, who's now in a coma. One night, while walking home, Mei sees a girl who looks like Nid at the corner of the street. She follows her into the key building. Mei finds a chair with red threads, and Nid emerges from the dark corner. It turns out, Nid refused to return, since she had already accepted the wrong judgments and decided to be the person people think of her. The flashback reveals that the red thread ghost, made from people's judgment of her and rumors about her disappearance, convinces her to stay in the present and be the person they think she is, fake, self-centered, and an attention seeker. May rebuts that Nid cannot accept the expectations because other friendship books contain good compliments about her. May then plays the song she read from the friendship book, angering Nid. With May's encouragement, Nid fights the Red Thread Ghost, which haunts Siam Square. This time, she finally returns home where she belongs. The film ends with Turk waking up and revealing himself as the person that May has been casually talking to. This is Daniel's CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.